before her diagnosis, she was just a typical little baby. We were just chugging along, doing preschool and baby stuff. Yeah, she was two when she was diagnosed. She has a mass on her kidney. You have to get to the emergency room now. And we just kind of dropped everything and ran to, took her to the emergency room. And that was when, you know, we went from everything is really, really normal to everything is just, just crazy. Crazy, right? We had no idea what was going on. You just sort of enter an entirely new world. Like, there's this world out there of pediatric cancer, and we, you just walk through the door, and now you're in a new world. We had never really thought about pediatric cancer, dealing with the side effects of treatment, figuring out treatments. Trying to learn everything we could about what neuroblastoma is. So she was a stage 2B, so the, it was a completely resectable tumor, but because one of the lymph nodes had some involvement, it hadn't spread everywhere right. by that point. And so they were not entirely sure how to tell us to treat her because they said that her case was really unusual. So we went to CHOP, and so at CHOP we saw Dr. Maris, and he was like, no, this is, this is high risk. You've got to have the whole treatment. And at that point, the, the whole treatment went... Six rounds of induction chemotherapy. Right, and then a autologous, autologous right. bone marrow transplant. Right. We knew that it was just a good idea to be in clinical trials. That if you're in a clinical trial, whether you're in the control group or whether you're in the experimental group, you get better monitoring and your outcomes are just better. So being in clinical trials is it's really good for the patient. So we signed her up for this monoclonal antibody clinical trial that was going on. And she was in the process of getting the, the pre-study for that, which meant you know they did another MIBG scan, they did some more bone marrow biopsies. Mm -hmm. Dr. Griffin called us in and, there and told me that they had found uh, tumor cells in her bone marrow for the first time. Never shown up in her bone marrow before, no evidence that it had been in her bone marrow. And now after a complete course of traditional treatment, it was now in her bone marrow. And for high-risk high neuroblastoma, that's it. If it's persisted in a measurable level after the full round of treatment, then your mortality rate is incredibly high. I thought at the time that was it. I thought, okay, she's, she's going to die. You know, it's gonna be just a matter of time. It also kicked us out of the clinical trial. So we were not eligible for the clinical trial because she had ongoing disease. Right. And the requirement was no evident disease for the, um, for the clinical trial. And then Dr., um, Dr. Grupp and Dr. Maris at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia advocated to get compassionate release for the, for the monoclonal antibody treatment. And so with compassionate release, Elizabeth was able to actually get the drug it was going to be something that could really make a difference for her. And actually, I asked Dr. Grupp, mm -hmm. as we were getting just prepared to even think about it, I said, well, is there any chance at all that during the clinical trials, it could be shown that this drug would be so effective that everybody would get it? Because again, I was just really worried about being in the control group. Right. And he said, no, that's very rare. It's really hard to show anything being you know, that, that effective and so, probably that wouldn't happen, but my understanding is that is kind of what happened. It's been shown that that drug really is very helpful. Without that treatment, she would never have made it. We were maybe the first family to walk through that threshold into this new treatment, but that door's open now, and new doors probably are going to be open for other families and other children facing different sorts of cancer, and to just not give up hope, but to do keep researching and asking questions yourself to find the researchers and find the drugs that are gonna support what your child needs. Absolutely. There aren't very many children who would get cancer, and that's great. But for the few that do get cancer and that live through it, usually there are lots of issues with hearing, with learning, with growth, that are just gonna be with those children and that family for the rest of their lives. Better earlier treatments can really prevent a lot of that from happening. Public funding makes sense. The research makes sense. It saves lives. It saves money. It helps people be more productive throughout their entire life. To help a family and a child not have to go through all of that is just, as far as, you know, Congress and paying taxes, that's got to be a huge benefit. 